Hello, I'm Catherine Song. This is a presentation of our paper, Towards Decomposable Interactive Systems, Design of a Backyard Degradable Wireless Heating Interface. As we all know, sustainability is a rapidly growing concern in HCI, and the world of physical design and prototyping is no exception. In recent years, we have seen several exciting demonstrations of designs that incorporate novel bio-based materials. For example, polylactic acid, or PLA, has become one of the most popular filament materials for 3D printing, and is also used in many commercial goods. PLA is a bioplastic made from plant starch that is certified as biodegradable by various organizations. However, as you might know from your own experience in trying to throw away so-called eco-friendly products, such goods actually require specialized industrial conditions to degrade in a reasonable amount of time. In practice, Although PLA is technically bio-based and biodegradable, much of it still ends up in the landfill, where it may take hundreds of years to degrade. Unlike PLA, mycelium and several other materials that fellow researchers and designers have explored are indeed easily compostable. We call these backyard degradable and decomposable in our paper to distinguish them from industry terminology. Mycelium is a wonderful housing material, but most demonstrations of interactive systems with it have still relied on embedded, non-decomposable electronic components. We show that by bringing sustainable material selection even more to the forefront and prioritizing it very early in the design process, we can take this one step further and design fully decomposable systems that do not require complicated extraction at end of life. We think that this approach is especially relevant for semi-permanent electronic applications that demand both reusability and responsible disposability. Smart packaging that has enhanced functionality, such as sensing or heating, belongs in this category. Eco-conscious consumers may wish to reuse such packaging when possible, but packaging inevitably becomes too soiled or inconvenient to carry at a certain point in its life. Ideally, at that point, it should be able to be backyard degradable. With this in mind, for our example system, we design a reusable portable packaging envelope that can wirelessly heat its contents on the go. We take advantage of the growing network of wireless chargers that are quickly becoming ubiquitous in public spaces. Such chargers are even being integrated into cell phones. Let's talk about the design process. We start by considering the basic circuit diagram for a conventional joule or resistive heater. Heat is generated when electrical current, provided by a battery or wall outlet, for example, flows through resistive elements, often made from a nickel chromium alloy or similar metal. To heat large areas, these wires may be arranged in a serpentine or otherwise area covering pattern. This is essentially how a conventional electrical stovetop works. To take the bulky power source out of the picture, the resistive elements may be inductively coupled to a wireless charger. While there is normally a circuit on the receiving end to convert the transmitted AC signal into DC, we want to use only decomposable materials, so we eliminate all components of the receiving circuitry except the receiving coil, which is just a passive element that can be made with conductive decomposable materials. Next, we need a decomposable replacement for the resistive elements. We looked to nature for this. In particular, we take advantage of the branching fractal patterns of leaf veins. We coat leaf skeletons with silver nanowires to turn them into resistive heating elements. Silver nanowires are commercially available and may be synthesized with non-toxic reactants. We also utilize chitosan, a natural decomposable material made from crustacean shells, to stabilize the leaf skeletons and increase the uniformity of heating across the leaf heaters. Now, I'll show you the fabrication process that we use to make the leaf heaters and integrate them into a paper packaging form. First, we prepare a chitosan gel by mixing chitosan powder with a dilute acetic acid solution. After initial mixing, we add glycerol as a plasticizer and mix again. We then take a leaf skeleton, which we purchased online, dip it in the chitosan, and hang it to dry. Next, we cut the leaf skeleton into small patches and dip it into a silver nanowire solution. To assemble the packaging, we gather two leaf heaters, a paper snack-sized envelope, two pieces of paper tape with a natural rubber adhesive, water-based non-toxic silver ink, and a coil of copper wire, 
which for prototyping simplicity, we use here as a proxy for a silver ink or nanowire coil that could be printed directly onto the paper envelope with an inkjet printer. The leaves are stuck onto the adhesive side of one piece of paper tape and connected in parallel with the silver ink. The mounted leaves are then adhered to the paper bag. Similarly, the wire coil is mounted to the other piece of paper tape, and silver ink is used to connect this to the simple leaf circuitry on the reverse side. The resulting packaging is lightweight and takes on the appearance of a normal paper envelope. Of course, one could instead choose to expose the leaves and coil design to achieve a desired aesthetic. You could do this by using a transparent degradable encapsulation material, such as cellophane tape. Now let's see the system in action. The envelope may be decorated with a non-toxic thermochromic ink design to help us see when the contents are hot. When placed onto a wireless charger, we can see that the thermochromic ink changes from blue to yellow. This may be more precisely monitored with an IR camera. Using this camera, we find that the envelope can reach an average temperature of 73.6 degrees Celsius. Let's talk about some applications. In this packaging form, our system may be used to increase the enjoyment of food. For example, we can put a plain hard store-bought cookie into the envelope. We can then place it on a wireless charger. In a few minutes, we have a perfectly warmed cookie with melted caramel. Beyond making food more enjoyable, our heater can also help with food safety applications, easily reaching the 63 degrees Celsius necessary for milk pasteurization, for example. Our system can also be used to manipulate heat-activated shape-changing materials. Here, we take a small piece of nitinol wire and bend it into an arbitrary shape. After a few minutes of warming in the envelope, the nitinol returns to its original shape. While this is an extremely simple demonstration, this idea can be extended in various ways. Thermal expanding foam may be placed inside the packaging and made to expand to conform and protect delicate contents. Or shape-changing elements could be used both decoratively and as a safety feature to indicate if contents have already been heated before. After the packaging is unwanted, it may simply be thrown into backyard soil where it can fully degrade in as few as 60 days. Beyond heaters, we hope that this demonstration inspires future work in fully backyard degradable systems. While decomposable systems are subject to inherent drawbacks, there are many other applications for which these systems are well suited. Temporary smart fashion accessories and temporary sensor deployment in hard to access environments are a few such examples. On behalf of all co-authors at Accenture Labs and UC Berkeley, I thank you for watching. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions.